Hello, my name is Claire Russell and my company is MetaLife. We run events and services that help people connect to their intuition, to evolve into the potential of who they are. And so I wanted to share with you a little bit about my journey of connecting to my intuition, or I should say reconnecting with my intuition. I believe it's something that runs through all of us as a thread and that sometimes we forget it, sometimes it's not being encouraged in our education, in our upbringing, however it might be. And that my journey to reconnect with my intuition was a deeply fulfilling one. It's something which I feel has made my life um, more satisfying, fulfilling, peaceful, um, enables me to make decisions without the stress of those decisions, and has opened up an inner creativity, uh, which I really enjoy. So my journey, so I, I worked for seven years in a corporate environment and I enjoyed what I did. I enjoyed the intellectual stimulation of it um, and the people I worked with as well, I enjoyed working with them. However, I also had this inner wanting to explore the bigger questions in life. What is it to be human? What is truth? What is the essence of who we are? And so I decided to take two years out to follow my intuition. Now that was actually uh, created through a time when I was living in China and while I was out there I started to, as well as working, to, to learn different healing modalities, Reiki in particular. And I've mentioned in another YouTube that it was just profound for me to do my Reiki 1 training and then suddenly find that I could feel energy coming out of my hands, that I could feel this life force coming out of my hands that could be used to heal myself and others. And it just like, blew my mind as to what it was to be human, and what possibility existed for us. And that started a whole journey for me, a two-year journey, to explore my intuition. And I didn't know where it would lead, but it flowed. It happened along the way. So I ended up training in different healing modalities, training in meditation, in yoga, and also doing a year-long um, spiritual life coaching apprenticeship program. And it was an amazing journey. I loved all of it. But all I wanted to talk about was what I noticed that enabled that journey to happen in me. Some of the principles that allowed that to come to life. I don't think we all need to move to China to do that, but some of the principles behind it I think might be helpful. So, so firstly, by moving to China what I effectively did was um, put myself in a culture that's very different from me, so very different from Western culture, and also remove myself from all of the cultural settings um, of back home. So perhaps friends, family, expectations I have of myself, normal ways of living in a Western society. And that is incredibly freeing. Because what I managed to do, even though I didn't know I was doing it at the time, <laughs> was to remove expectations of myself. Remove expectations of how I should be, what role I should play, and what cultural norms I was attached to. And when I did that, I allowed myself to have an unfiltered experience of my life, which is immensely freeing, immensely freeing. So letting go of expectations gave me this unfiltered experience of life. And from that unfiltered free space, I could start to realize and connect with what I really desired. What were the things that attracted me, that pulled me? And so, for example, going and learning healing, or going and learning with certain teachers, I had this ability to, to feel that inner, inner desire, inner attraction towards something, and to follow that flow. I had the freedom to be able to follow that flow. Adyashanti um, has a book called Dancing with Emptiness, which describes this really beautifully. He talks about it as a leaning. So we feel leaning towards something. It's like a, a gentle nudge towards something that we might enjoy. And that's what I was starting to get in touch with, this natural leanings. And from that kind of desire of finding things, of letting go of expectations, I could start to explore some things that previously I wouldn't have been able to explore. And the reason I wouldn't have been able to explore them is because of fear of failure. So another thing that I discovered, very important in connecting with our intuition, is letting go of a fear of failure. Because you can imagine how many things do we not try because of the need to get it right or to be successful? How many new ventures are we too cautious about experiencing because of this inner need to be right or to, for it to be a success? So what I, I enable myself to do, again from 
taking my sadha out of my natural context, my Western context, was to let go of this fear of failure. In our adult life, my experience is that we we almost we can map it out we can say okay so if we have a decision to make there is a b c or d and if i take a then these are the consequences pros and cons if i take b consequences pros and cons and we can be very very logical about how life might map out and we can also be quite risk averse in that mapping now if we take away the adult context and imagine a child and how a child decides to do something so at some point in our lives, we're all children. We all had those experiences of engaging with life in a more playful, inquisitive way. And also in our lives, we've all, everything we do now, everything we know how to do, at some point we did for the first time. At some point we did it not knowing how it would turn out. Not knowing if it would be fun or if it wouldn't be fun, but we gave it a go. We had a willingness to try. We had this inquisitive, playful nature. And that I also find really essential to intuition, to be able to come back to this childlike place, this childlike place of exploration. Now that doesn't mean that we have to make radical changes in our life, um, we have to make radical changes in our external life, but really what it means is to be able to take these qualities, this inquisitive, playful, exploring qualities into our inner world, into our inner mind, into our inner consciousness, that we take off the barriers, the cautions, the expectations within ourselves so that we can explore this, this inner consciousness more for ourselves. And in doing so, we will free up our intuition. What I also discovered about this process is how important it is to trust myself and trust life. Now this isn't a blind trust. We bring all of our intellect and everything else with us, but there is this kind of inner understanding of trust and that when we take a step providence will move with us so for example when I um, all I knew was I was going to take two years out to follow my intuition but I didn't know what I'd be doing over that time and so the whole journey following my diet desires letting go of expectation brought all these amazing teachers to me even places to live um, many different things and one of the synchronicities that happened along the way was when I got to the end of that two year period and I was back living in the UK almost to the week of that two years finishing I got an email from um, someone saying would you like to take over the Bristol Intuitive Development Group and I was like of course at that stage I had no idea where I was going to take things but that was the first step and many other synchronicities have happened along the way so I hope that just gives you a flavour of how your intuition can guide you in your life in this more flowing, playful, inquisitive way. When we're willing to drop our expectations, drop our judgments of ourselves, and step into those desires, gentle leanings, natural leanings and attractions we find in our life. Now you might say, well that's just your journey, that's just your experience. How can that work for me? And what I find is that that intuitive impulse is natural within it. So the workshops I run, that intuitive knowing, when we listen to it, just pops out and comes out. And it also seems to be fundamental in some of the massive shifts that we make in the world and is recognised by some of the greatest scientists. So to give you a quote from Albert Einstein, he said, Intuition is the sacred gift and the rational mind is the faithful servant. We have created a society that honours the servant and has forgotten the gift. It's a powerful statement from one of the greatest scientists of our time. And there's also uh, the mathematician, one of the originators of chaos theory, theory, Henry Poincar. And to quote him, he says, It is by logic that we prove and it is by intuition that we discover that actually when we connect to our intuition, we step into that creative space, the space where newness can arrive, when we can explore the unknown in ourselves and take our lives forward. And it's an exciting place. And my experience also is that some of the fundamental principles and ways of operating within science are vital to our intuition. So scientists come from a perspective of deep observation, deep observation and awareness of the fineness of existence, whether that is in studying um, 
experiments in very, very fine level detail using microscopes and a whole host of other things, or, or just in their experience of reality. And that quality of observation and awareness also guides us in our intuition. It also comes from a mindset of experimenting, coming back to almost that playful child, the one who's willing to experience things for the first time. And that our intuition is all about connecting to that experiencer within and understanding that experiencer. And I think these traditions or these, these qualities in science, or these qualities and um, principles of intuition have flown through many, uh, many generations and many cultures so, for example, the shamans, the shamans of the indigenous tribes, it is their, through their fine observation and fine awareness of their environment that they guide their tribes, that they guide their people, and also connect to that almost mystical intuition within themselves. And then we can also look to the yogis of the East. Now, the yogis were experimenters of their own body, working with breath in different ways, working with what they eat and, and many different things to understand how they can fine tune their inner consciousness, how to work with their intention, their intuition, their inner knowing and that consciousness. And it's through those traditions, whether that's the modern ones of science and the ancient ones of the East or of indigenous tribes, that we can come to know our intuition more and more deeply. We can come and realise those principles that guide us in our intuitive journey. And so when we're when I'm running different workshops, different events, we start to draw on many of those different traditions so that we can come to know our own intuition, our own inner knowing, and hopefully also experience that peace within, that sense of well-being, that sense of fulfilment and satisfaction as we move through our life. If you want to find out more, you can go to our website, which is www.metalife.org.uk. Thank you.